The Star Trek universe has many faster than light methods of travel and I've already done a series of videos that cover many of these, from Borg transwarp to a null space catapult. But today's video is on some of the smaller scale but equally impressive ways to cross interstellar distances. Hi, Rick here, and today we're going to look at these and their potential for Starfleet and Federation application, or why they were never followed up on. The most famous of these smaller scale cross-system transport systems are the Iconian Gateways. Built by an advanced empire 200,000 years old, the Iconians were referred to by other ancient species as demons of air and darkness, as they could simply appear out of thin air and then disappear with equal brevity. These gateways were first confirmed to exist by the USS Yamato NCC 71807. NCC 1305E 24383? Woo, Star Trek consistency. It was also of interest to the Romulan Star Empire, with Commander Taris of the IRW Harkona credited with the discovery of the formerly lost and now desolate planet, Iconia, on behalf of the Empire. The gateways are practically a complete unknown to both the Federation and Empire in terms of how they operate due to the limited time they were able to study them. The gateway on Iconia was destroyed, and a subsequent one in the Gamma Quadrant was too, in both cases to deny the advanced technology to anti-Federation powers. The first hurdle seems to be any automated defences around such installations, such as the probe that attempted to download software of some kind to any ship in orbit of Iconia. It could have been a virus, but a Galaxy-class starship suffered extensive and escalating malfunctions in 2365 after it was scanned by the probe. It may also have simply been a computer program that was attempting to communicate with the incompatible Starfleet systems of Elkars and the Romulans both. So there's the biggest hurdle, Iconian software. Even if unintentional is pretty aggressive and interferes with Starfleets, so studying it is fraught with risks. But the true issue is its rarity. The gateway network during the height of the Iconian Empire was expansive, covering a known 70,000 light years, but it has had at least 200 millennia to decay and be destroyed by civilizations fearful of the Iconians. In theory, a gate such upscaled to starship size would function as an instantaneous network of travel, but nothing is known as to how they worked and until more are discovered, only speculation remains. In 2371, the crew of the USS Voyager NCC 74656 encountered the Zakarians, natives of the Delta Quadrant. Well, Voyager sure did encounter a lot of these technologies, it's like something about their situation meant that they were actively looking for them. These relatively peaceful people had developed a form of folded space transporter that worked in a similar way to a coaxial warp drive combined with a transporter. It would actively select the destination coordinates and warp space time to then beam a person across to the new location without crossing the distance. It had a range of at least 40,000 light years. This was a remarkable technology and one the Federation has been experimenting with at least theoretically, since the mid-23rd century, with the Elway Theorem. The inhabitants of Rutia IV had developed this technology, and thanks to its very nature of bending space, it could bypass force fields and shields. The technology was not pursued by the Federation, as it caused irreversible cell damage with every use. However, the Sakarian version was far more powerful and produced no ill effects. The core components of this technology was the spatial trajector that the crew of the USS Voyager acquired through black market trade after being denied officially. Once implemented on the Starship, the crew discovered that it was simply incompatible with Federation tech. Alright, so it wouldn't work for the ship without an entire system built around it, but surely it's something to keep an eye on. Well, it turns out that the extreme range of this Kari spatial transporter was accomplished by using the unique quartz crystalline mantle of Sakari itself as an amplifier, so it would only work with such amazing range and capacity on a similar planet. If ever the Federation discovers a planet of identical structure, 
a staggering rarity, maybe they could revisit the technology, but for now, there are more promising alternatives with problems that are far easier to solve. There also exists a form of standard transporter tech that beams matter through subspace as opposed to regular space, increasing its range to several light years, which is an impressive feat for a system that only requires existing Trek technologies as of 2370. This was not a frequently used device however, as it was difficult to maintain the transporter pattern in this strange realm and had a high risk of failure, and it was only on a personal level. There was also the Kalandan transporter that could relocate entire vessels in an instant over vast distances, almost a thousand light years, but this technology was a complete unknown. From the brief description given, it seems to be more akin to a transporter, but could also rely on some form of folding space. The computer system that governed this technology was destroyed by the crew of the Enterprise in 2268. It should also be pointed out that many forms of time travel, such as the Guardian of Forever, the Bajoran Orbs, the Red Angel flight suit and 26th century Federation timeships, also seem to be able to cross great distances but have a primary function of time travel, so I'd rather save those for a different list. Same with wormholes, artificial or not. So thanks for watching this video on these less traditional technologies for crossing the interstellar void. I've been Rick and until the next video, I'll see you again later. Goodbye.